go now to, um, I want to go over to uh, France. Ah, the French, French Frenchman. Actually, there's an Englishman there um, who you may have seen on YouTube. This thing is spreading like wildfire, except, I think, in the United Kingdom. He's a parliament member, uh, Daniel Hannan. Um, he kind of gave a tongue lashing to British Prime Minister Gordon Brown. Watch this. Last year, in the last 12 months, 100,000 private sector jobs have been lost, and yet you created 30,000 public sector jobs. Prime Minister, you cannot carry on forever squeezing the productive bit of the economy in order to fund an unprecedented engorgement of the unproductive. You know, and we know, and you know that we know that it's nonsense. The markets have said so, which is why our currency has devalued by 30%, and soon the voters too will get their chance to say so. They can see what the markets have already seen, that you are the devalued Prime Minister of a devalued government. Yeah. Daniel, um, welcome. First of all, thank you for speaking your mind on this. It's, it's refreshing, especially being there in France, to hear some common sense. Um, help, help me out. Yesterday, um, basically your Treasury Secretary, the guy who runs you know, the uh, Bank of England, came out and said, we're out of money. Stop spending money. Yet the rest of the world, in, including us, spending money like it's out of control. What is going on? Yeah. I mean, that's because we've already spent all of ours, right? It's, it's not because we've got this right. It's because uh, we got it wrong earlier than you guys, and so the coffers got emptier quicker than yours did. Uh, you know, you've got problems, but I wish we had your problems. Uh, you're making things worse, but you're starting from a better position. But every single thing that our government has done, literally every single thing it's done, has made things worse. You know, the, the bank bailouts, the nationalizations, the subsidies, the, uh, the, 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 the deferred tax rises. Uh, every, you know, there is not one uh, thing that they've got right. Okay. You, and you, it's so often the way in politics, isn't it? You know, it, the, the, the toughest thing is just to say there's nothing to do. You guys, you guys now can't even sell your bonds. You can't sell, like we have T-bills, you know, and that's our debt, that's your debt. Mm. Nobody's buying your stuff. That is in our future. You say yeah, we're, we're turning in a... into Zimbabwe. Oh yeah, and we're right behind you, Jack. Um, uh, Daniel, please explain. You say that you are in a better position. We're in a better position than England, but it's because you've had socialism for so long. We're now walking through that door like that's the answer to cancer. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Could you please explain what's in our future if we don't turn around now? Yeah, I love this show. I wish we had TV like this in the UK. Well, you never get a question like that on the BBC. It's just unthinkable. Yeah, the, 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 you know, the, the, the truth is exactly what you say. We had socialism for 10 years. And what this meant is that during the good years, during the years of low inflationary growth, when there was uh, low unemployment and there were big tax receipts, you know what? We increased the deficit. We borrowed more and more every year. So when the tough times came, we had no margin, we had no leeway. And yeah. so other countries are in a position, uh, I, I mean, I think it's a mistake, but at least they're in a position to try and spend more now. We already did all that. We blew it all away when we didn't need but to. But we were too. We were too. Uh, the Republicans were taking us down this road just slower than we're going now. But now we have, now we have a Congress and a president that say they're going to create jobs by the government spending money. Could you help us out? For Americans who are like, oh, well, that sounds like a good idea. Could you help us out on how it's worked out in England? Yeah, I mean, well, it, what happens is that you create all these what they call government jobs, but which are not really jobs as you or I would understand the word, right? These are not uh, public sector jobs of policemen or firemen or nurses or teachers. These are you know, liaison officers and outreach workers and local government officials and racism awareness counselors and this great kind of apparatus <laughs> of the Quango state. And the basic purpose of creating these jobs is to make them want to vote for the guy who created the job because they know that mm -hmm. if a fiscally conservative government should mm -hmm. take over, they are going to lose their jobs. And so yep. we now have a kind of out of control Labour government that has got nothing to lose because they know that it's going to be us who has to pick up the mess in the, in the event and they would run 
rather bankrupt and break every last thing in the Treasury than alienate their last remaining constituency, which is the government employees who know that they've got nowhere Real else quick, to go. Real quick, could I ask you this? We've only got 30 seconds here, Daniel, but you're standing there. Um, you're the parliamentary uh, representative for, uh, for the United Kingdom there at the EU. So you're standing there at the EU. There's a, there's a, a push to unite us all under one big global umbrella. Do you think that maybe some of these decisions are being made all around the globe to trash the dollars, to trash the pound, to trash everything, to be able to have one big global uniting there in the end that could save us all? I certainly think that the more remote government is, the worse the decisions get, the more expensive it becomes, the more bureaucratic it becomes. You know, one of the really good things that you guys have got right, and that I really want us to import from you, is that you've devolved power. You've got this Jeffersonian idea that you take decisions <laughs> as closely as possible to the people. And unfortunately, it's turned, it's turned you know into what, a comedy show. Now, but I tell you, you, I tell you, if you, you haven't been if here for you a while. Had, you, You've got, you've got a constitution, I tell you, you've got a constitution that begins, we the people. The, the Treaty of Rome begins, His Majesty the King of the Belgians, right? Yours we is based around decentralizing power, taking decisions, ours is based around ever closer union. And so whatever your problems are, you know the, the way Texans used to say, we've got it this big? I tell you, in Europe, we've got yeah. your problems this big. Daniel, thank you very much. We're going to lose your window. We'd love to have you back, sir. Boy, that guy, I mean, please defect. Come over here. We need more like you.